Hi guys, welcome to another class. Today's class, we are going to be talking about the different adaptation of plants to terrestrial habitats and different types of plants we have based on the parts on land in which they are found. So we are going to be starting with the mesophytes. Now the mesophytes are terrestrial plants which grow in moist habitat and well aerated soil. So they moderate humidity and they grow, they do not grow in waterlogged soil or in soil with abundance of salts. So the example of the adaptive features that these organisms have, I want to now talk about the adaptive features that the mesophytes have that enable them to survive in the terrestrial habitat. The first one is the possession of a well-developed root system. So mesophytes have a well-developed root system. Then another one is the mesophytes possess stems that are generally aerial and profusely branched. It means their stems are generally... Another one is the possession of longer, thinner leaves with high number of stomata on the underside of the leaves. So the terrestrial plants, the mesophytes, possess strong, long le longer leaves that are also thinner and have high number of stomata on the underside of the leaves. Another one is the possession of mesophyll layer that is well differentiated with many intercellular spaces. An example of the mesophytes that we have are the hibiscus, cassava plants, and so on and so forth. Now let's talk about the xerophytes. These are plants found in desert areas or water areas that have little or no amount of water. So these plants are called xerophytes. Now let's talk about the adaptive features of these plants to survive in this kind of condition. Number one is the reduction of the number of stomata to ensure fewer pores are exposed that would allow water loss through transpiration. So in the mesophytes, mesophytes have more or a larger number of stomata, while the terrestrial, the xerophytes, the desert plants, possess fewer stomata of a smaller number of stomata to prevent water loss. Another one is the possession of thick waxy cuticle that reduces water loss through transpiration. So most of the features of the xerophytes are just to prevent water loss in different ways and to conserve water. So another one is the possession of extensive deep root system that extend to the water table beneath the soil. So the xerophytes have roots that reach far deeper into the soil where the water table is found that enables the plant to absorb large amounts of water. And another adaptation or feature in the xerophytes that enables them to survive in the desert is the possession of modified leaves that are modified to look like spines or thorn-like structures to reduce the area exposed to transpiration. So most plants that has, most xerophytes are have leaves, have spines and thorns instead of leaves. So their leaves are modified to spines or thorns, and that's just to reduce water loss also through transpiration. Another adaptation of the xerophytes is they shed their leaves during the dry season to prevent water loss through transpiration also. And another one is that they possess the ability to fold their leaves during the day to decrease the number of stomata, also reducing the rate of transpiration. Now, examples of the xerophytes are cactus, acacia, and euphorbia. So those are desert plants. Now let's talk about the last type of plant that we have, which are the halophytes. And these are salt-resistant organisms. Now, these plants, examples are white mangrove and the red mangrove. These are plants that are salt-resistant. And examples of them, these plants are white mangrove and red mangrove. Now, halophytes could be plants and they could also be animals. There are also animals that are called elophytes. Examples are marine animals such as sharks and whales. With that, we've come to the end of today's class on adaptation. Now, that's the end of the lesson for adaptation. See you next class.